Hello everybody, Peter Finch here and welcome down to a video where we're going to be looking at the most forgiving golf clubs in the world. So I'm down here at Formby Ladies Golf Club and I've teamed up with my good friends at Golf Bidder to bring you this video. Now if you don't know about Golf Bidder, we've done loads and loads of videos with them in the past. They are the finest purveyors of secondhand golf clubs on the internet and you can find out more about them in the description below. They basically sell golf clubs, they also buy your old equipment as well. So if you haven't checked out the previous videos we've done with them in the past and you do want to find out more, as mentioned, that link is in the description below. And they have sent me through a putter, irons and a driver, which have to be some of the most forgiving the game has ever produced. I'm going to go around nine holes here at Formby Ladies Golf Club, where forgiveness and accuracy is an absolute premium. Now, the first hole we start on here, 422 yard par five, which is what I want to hear. <laughs> oh, that is one whippy shaft. <laughs> Ah, oh, straight down the middle. Absolutely adore this driver. <laughs> oh, this thing doesn't miss. So firstly, what do we mean by a forgiving golf club? So these golf clubs are high MOI, so high moment of inertia, which is basically resistance to twisting and how long that ball can stay on the club face on an off center strike. But also the CG, so the center of gravity in these clubs is pushed very far back. Now that means the ball is gonna get up into the air much quicker and fly a lot further, even on the strikes that you don't hit well. And that's two out of two fairways with that driver. Although I do only have a pitching wedge in these irons, so this is gonna have to be a, a long chip and run. Oh, <laughs> who needs a sand wedge? So we might as well start with the putter. So this is the Scotty Cameron Futura X. Now this putter was basically designed by Adam Scott and Scotty Cameron in conjunction. And it was the one that he used to win the Masters. Now he was using the broom handle putter, but this is basically that version. The reason that I've picked this putter is not because of that. It's because Scotty Cameron aren't renowned for producing really forgiving putters, but this is a big exception. Because what Scotty Cameron did, he basically milled the head design out of aluminium. Now that's obviously a much lighter material than steel. But what that allowed him to do is actually push perimeter weight to the edge of the golf club. And those two weights on the back of the club that's moved the CG way, way back. Even if you strike this out of the heel and the toe, the club face will stay incredibly stable. And because it's got those big hefty weights at the back, it's got a beautiful flow to the putter as well. There are lots of low back center of gravity putters. This one is just good. I'm not 100% sure on the massive grip that it has on it. However, I've just got a birdie with it, so can't complain. Okay, par three. overshot this green a little bit with those irons. They may have a little bit more power than I'm used to. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this putter isn't what you would call pretty. It's not a beautiful thing. It's not a creation of Michelangelo. It's more a creation of a hive intelligence on a planet far, far away. But when it sits behind the ball, it actually frames it pretty well. And the alignment aids on the back actually do help with this. And the way that those weights are spread out and separated also helps with that. And then down the slope, break. That is not too bad, is it really? Let's get a bird's eye view of this putter in action. I mean, you can see that, you know what? It's actually grown on me more and more, not in a bad way, not like a warp, but like a, like a catchy song that you don't like at first, but then you grow to love. Easiest of threes. This is a tough fairway to hit normally. It shakes my bones to simply look down upon this stretch of land. However, armed with this driver, it's just not a problem. Straight down the middle. <laughs> look at that. Oh, that was a little bit necky, but you'd be shocked to hear. It's found the left side of the fairway. And we're on the very, very edge of the fairway. Let's use this four iron instead. Well, kind of four iron, as you'll see in a moment. Nice tiny draw. <laughs> oh, 
just beyond that bunker, left half of the fairway. Now for the irons. The reason I've chose these is I absolutely love them and I think that many, many golfers would benefit from this type of golf club. Now these are the Cleveland Launcher HB Turbo Irons. I've gone from a four to a pitching wedge. The shafts are exceptionally light, regular flex and super, super whippy, similar to the driver, which we'll get onto. But this is basically a full set of hybrid clubs. Now what that means, it's got a very, very big club head, which is hollow a thin face so you get a lot of ball speed and because it's hollow and because they can push the cg lower and further back it launches very very high and basically with a full set of hybrid clubs you just get so much forgiveness now something which i've struggled with a little bit out there today is understanding fully trajectory and how it's actually going to come out draw fade these obviously aren't specced up for me at all however you can literally just stick these behind the ball and like toe it, heel it, thin it. It doesn't matter. It's going to get up and go forward. And as a new golfer, as a beginner golfer or someone who doesn't strike the ball well, this half hybrid, half iron mix is just brilliant. I don't actually know how far I've got here, but I'm just going to trust it. I'm going to say it's about 90. I've got my pitching wedge which doesn't look too much like a hybrid actually this is a little bit a little bit more like what i'm normally seeing because it's a progressive set gonna a little half swing cut it in there how good does that look stop 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 oh oh my word i think i'll actually get these look at this didn't even know the yardage and just look at that stop it now, the initial reaction of many people to these irons is just like, oh, that is not a good looking club. And it is an ultimate forgiveness iron. There's no doubt about it. You know, this is not a beautiful Mizuno blade. This is a chunky, progressive set of hybrid slash irons. They're designed to do one thing, and that is give you forgiveness. So don't be expecting, again, the Mona Lisa when you put these behind the ball. You know, this is very much a abstract Jackson Pollock what am I talking about today? I don't know where all these art references have suddenly come from. Oh, just... This hole has given me nightmares in the past. Out of bounds right, thick gorse left. I'm taking out this beautiful driver, aiming straight down the middle. That is the reason why. What a golf club. After the success of that last hole, look at how I ball it again. Probably got a little bit longer, I think about 100. So I'm just gonna hit half a swing. Oh, get on it. Oh, Pete, what the hell is going on with these irons? Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, these irons do have their drawbacks. For example, because they've got a very thin face, because of their construction, the actual backspin that you get on these clubs is a little bit lower than you would do normally with my irons, say, so the Mizuno mp20s if you're going to get a set of clubs which is just easy to hit and that is your priority something like this will just go down an absolute treat for you i've got to be honest this pitching wedge is going down an absolute treat for me i'm pretty sure i'll have to hit this on the next as well hole in one alert maybe but let's try and get two birdies in two. Oh, great Go on, be good. Oh, oh. I thought for just a second I'd done it. <laughs> just a fleeting moment. Well, I don't know if you were getting as excited as me on that tee shot or if you knew better and my eyes are getting progressively horrendous. I'm 20 feet away. <laughs> Nowhere near. It's getting way, way, way too excited. Now, this driver. <laughs> Only one real weakness to it. I've got it's just going to spin up, so just need to try and launch it, keep it in the air. Oh, go on, stay in the air. There's the pitch mark there. It's carried all the way onto the top of the bunker. If it had hit the slope down there, it actually would have got quite close. It's probably carried about 270, 280. Oh, settle, settle. Damn, these irons are strong. So I suppose you're gonna to wanna to know about this driver, aren't you? 
This is a Callaway Big Bertha Fusion driver, and it's about three, four years old now. And to be honest, it is possibly the most underrated driver maybe of all time. Now, let me set the scene. What Callaway did with this driver, it's a multi-material construction. So they stripped out the crown of most of the titanium, filled it in with carbon, and they did that with other places on the club head as well. And that is because they could stretch out the club head backwards, almost into a little bit of a triangular shape, and put all the weight they could towards the back of the club. Now, this gave it a super, super low center of gravity, very high moment of inertia as well, and just made it incredibly forgiving. Honestly, when this driver came out, I was stunned at how easy it was to hit, at how forgiving it was, and just how it would absolutely take the driver market by storm, because obviously slicing it, hitting it poorly, this is what amateur golfers struggle with the most. It, it had to do well. It didn't. It did absolutely crap. Now, there has to be a reason for this, and the reason is very simple. When that driver was put in the hands of fitters and of the amateurs when they were testing it, the forgiveness was absolutely unparalleled. Couldn't get away from that. Less dispersion, all the rest of it. But the simple fact is, it wasn't quite as long as some of the other competitors. And it was also just at that start, kind of three, four years ago, if you remember when the prices of drivers really, really jumped and the Fusion was expensive. So people were going into a fitting with it, understanding, oh my goodness me, yes, this is so forgiving. What a wonderful club. But then people were getting a tailor-made in their hands, some of the other Callaway drivers, for example, even the Pings at that time, and they went that little bit further. They might not have been quite as forgiving, but they went that bit further. And in the eyes of so many golfers still to this day, and for good reason as well, distance is king. So the Fusion, despite all its... I didn't get that. Could no, you try again? Exactly. Callaway, could you try again? I'm not sure I understand. And Callaway made one other massive, massive mistake when advertising this driver. They actually spoke about how forgiving it was. And golfers, not bothered. They don't care. Distance, 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 give me more distance. I missed one fairway so far today. And that is because I was aiming at the pin, not the center of the fairway. Now I've got this driver set to 10.5 degrees, got a very, very light shaft in it, quite like this Iomic grip, to be honest as well. But I just want to make sure that don't let these clubs fall by the wayside just because you're trying to get 10 to 15 yards more distance. Think about how important accuracy is to many golfers. Yes, distance is important, but extra distance is not going to help you out when you're in the middle of the trees. So please, please consider the Fusion driver. Come on, one more fairway. And of course, that's what it does. Just <laughs> go. Uh, not bad. Ah, oh, pace again. So I didn't play too bad in the end. I mean, the secret to Formula Ladies is literally just hit the fairway. Normally keep the driver in the bag, but with that Fusion, obviously, that's not an issue. But get down into those comments below. Let me know what you think about my selection of clubs. Certainly very happy as far as what I wanted to do with this video. You know, find those super forgiving, super easy to hit clubs. Let me know what you have found to be super forgiving clubs as well. There are so, so many out there. Okay, just wanted to say a massive, massive thank you to Golfbit of helping get this video sorted as well. As mentioned, get down into that description below. Check them out if you haven't already. Such a massive selection of clubs on that website. It's absolutely ridiculous. And obviously we've been going there for the last five years now, the Golf Bit of Challenges. They're videos which I know you guys really like. And if you've not checked those out, please do as well. Huge thank you to Formula Ladies for letting me come down and film this morning as well. What a beautiful place. Ah, the world seems like a good and happy place today. <laughs> okay, we'll see you next time.